about. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We're joined now by uh, two very special guests, Bob Edgar of Common Cause and, and David Donnelly, National Campaign Director for the, the Public Campaign Action Fund. And gentlemen, thanks for being here. And, and you, you two are involved in an effort right now, and I know there's a new ad campaign that's launching this week to, to push, push something called Fair Elections. It's a public campaign finance bill. Uh, I want to start with you, Bob. What, what makes you optimistic this has a chance when we've seen so much other legislation fall by the wayside, including on campaign finance reform? I think the American public are really concerned about the housing crisis, the investment crisis, the banking crisis, and the health care debate, and even the oil spill in the Gulf, that money has influenced the way in which the House and Senate has been operating. And they know that corporations and labor unions have invested so much money in trying to get elected officials who serve their special interest and not the public's interest. And with the Citizens United Supreme Court decision, we think money will also uh, be exponentially increased and uh, the money will uh, taint this upcoming midterm election. And so we believe that the 157 co-sponsors in the House of Representatives for fair elections now is the moment for us to move and get uh, this important legislation passed so that voluntarily right. members of the House and Senate can run without taking any special interest money. But just on the practical level, how close are you, do you think, to actually getting this passed? That's a lot of co-sponsors, but can this get across the finish line? The answer is yes. Uh, we think that this is the moment. We have uh, strong statements out of uh, the Speaker of the House, Pelosi. We have a leader in the House side in John Larson, who's the author of the bill on the House side. And we have at least 30 other members of Congress who have not co-sponsored the bill but have told us that they support the legislation. Uh, we think that we're going to see a vote before this uh, adjournment of this uh, session so of Congress. So before August? Well, before October. Or, sorry, back for October. D David, as you know, it's very difficult to get anything done on campaign finance reform because a lot of these same special interests you're talking about. The, the House recently passed something called the Disclose Act, which right. I know you're familiar with. The Senate hasn't done anything on it yet. A lot of critics, though, looked at this and said, you've just carved out big exemptions for special interests. You said the NRA, the AARP, they don't have to play by the same rules. If this is what Congress has to do just to squeak something through, right. how, how can you do something even bolder than that? Well, I think because the public wants something bolder. Uh, than what they're seeing right now um, Congress take up. They want to see something that really gets to the root cause of the problem, which is uh, the amount of time that members of Congress spend raising money from, uh, from wealthy interests. And frankly, members of Congress want to get off that fundraising treadmill. We see a lot of support from members of Congress who are tired of the constant telemarketing from the, uh, the phone calls that they need to make to perfect strangers around the, around the country to raise money. And they want to have a different kind of campaign finance system as well. And so we're seeing the, the growth of support, not just uh, uh, outside of Congress, but also within Congress for a change in the way that elections are paid for. But Bob, is the Disclose Act even worth it? I mean, did, when, you, when no, you're saying that these big groups disclose, don't have to play by the same rules. The Disclose Act is important, but it's inadequate. And we see that particularly freshman members of Congress and others are hungry to be shown as reformers. And we think the Fair Elections Now Act is stronger. Uh, it's voluntary. It meets the Supreme Court uh, challenges. And uh, we think that it will uh, be helpful to both Democrats and Republicans uh, this fall. And we believe a strong vote in the House leads us to uh, uh, a strong vote in the Senate. Uh, you know, the, the members of the House and Senate are tired of all of the money raising. I ran for the United States Senate uh, years ago, and uh, the, I ran against Arlen Specter of Pennsylvania. He raised $6 million, I raised $4 million. Uh, just three years ago, the two candidates for Senate in Pennsylvania raised $37.5 million. Just think how much money every day they had to raise, most of it coming from special interest. Back in the olden days, the special interest put money in, but they used to come first with their talking points, their specific ideas. And if you voted right, they supported you. If you didn't vote right, they were out helping your opponent. Now they come with the money first. And David and I are trying to get money limited and focus more on the districts and mm -hmm. states rather than on running to California or New York to raise most of the money for campaigns. We wanted to ask you about good government transparency. We were talking at the top of the show about this recess appointment. Just in the in general, on the idea of recess appointments, the Obama administration came in and said they would do things differently. Do you think that is contradictory to what those pledges were for an open government, open White House? I think in the most part they have done things differently. They called out uh, lobbyists and they set up uh, certain rules in re relationship to lobbyists. Uh, my complaint about that is they didn't connect the lobbyist with money, and I think it's really a toxic cocktail. 
Uh, this recess appointment is based on frustration, frustration on the Senate side with the filibuster and also with the fact that one senator can hold up a, an appointment and we need more transparency in the Senate. And, uh, but in the I, meantime, I mean, the, the recess appointments, though, this exists in the Constitution. David, I want your take on this as well. This exists in the Constitution. I think it was written during a time where it was very hard for members of Congress to get back here. There were long recesses. Right. That's not the case anymore. This is purely a political end around, isn't it? Well, it, it may be, but I think Bob is right. I mean, there is a, a process of how uh, uh, legislation and appointments get made that is bottled up by, by one chamber and by, a, you know, it could be as, as few as, as one senator. And, you know, I think what the public is clamoring for is for dramatic changes in the way that how business is done here in Washington. And there may be lots of different things that can be done to fix the way that Washington works. But the biggest thing that we believe could be done is to address the money chase, that, that members of Congress spend far too much time thinking about money and raising money than dealing with the issues that are uh, before their constituents and dealing with the, with, you know, with the uh, the challenges of, of meeting their their constituents' needs, uh, and so and that's what the public is 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 asking for as well. We have organizations working in 24 mm -hmm. states around the country to advance the campaign. We're starting a multi-million dollar uh, uh, campaign to, to to move this legislation forward and to pass the legislation in, in the House, and hopefully that will start a national debate, not just about just passing this law, but about fixing the way that, and, that Washington works. And do you have a guarantee from Speaker Pelosi that there'll be a vote? We do, and uh, it's been public. Uh, she was on uh, mm -hmm. television speaking publicly about it. Uh, and Leader Reid? Hold her to her word. Leader Reid, Senate? Oh, that's another story. Getting there. All right, <laughs> All right Bob Edgar and, and David Donnelly, we appreciate you being here. This is the Fair Elections Act, and we'll look for your campaign ad launching, I believe, tomorrow. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Thank you. Thank you.